Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to introduce Mongoose and we're going to get it installed into our program or we're going to use it to access our MongoDB database. Now first off what is Mongoose? Well MongooseJS.com tells us it's elegant MongoDB object modeling for Node and they tell us why we need it right here. For any MongoDB validation casting a business logic boilerplate is a drag. In other words Using MongoDB's kind of default API, its native API, is a pain in the butt, is basically what it comes down, down to. Mongoose will allow us to simplify that a great deal and work with MongoDB inside of our applications much better and much more easily. It takes a lot of the complexity out of it, allowing us to use it more easily in our applications. So, let's go ahead and try it. And we're not going to do this inside of our Yelp comics. I'm going to make directory We'll call it cars because that's what we made our first database. CD into cars. So let's npm install mongoose. I'll be right back after that finishes. All right, that is done installing. So I'm going to touch cars.js, and this is just basically our app.js, but it's going to be self-contained. So let's close out of Yelp comics and come into cars. Cars.js. There's nothing here, obviously. So let's go ahead and plan out our steps. Step one is going to be to add a new car to the database. Step two is going to be get all cars from the database. So our first step is going to be to connect to the database. And I've already written all that out in the config that we used in the Yelp comics. So I'm just going to use that config instead of making a new one. So const config equals, and now I have to do a little bit of pathing, I have to go two dots to go up, because right now I'm in cars, to go up a level will put me in week 10, so I want to go then go into Yelp underscore comics, and then open up config.js. So I need to require that, oops, and then just to make sure it works, let's console.log config dot db dot user node on cars dot js it would help if I could type there we go it logged the it logged the username admin perfect and if you'll remember in that config I set up a connection string that connection string and you can see it right here, I've blocked out the um, password, obviously. But that connection string I just got from MongoDB Atlas. And if, you're, if you don't remember how to get that, go back and watch the previous video. I showed you exactly how to get that. It's near the end of the video. Um, but that's our connection string. That is what we need to, in order to connect using Mongoose. So looking at the Mongoose documentation, we looks like we need to do two things. We need to import Mongoose, as always, and then we need to connect to it. So let's just actually copy and paste all of this. Just this first, these first two lines are what we're looking for. There we go. So we are importing Mongoose, and now we are connected to it. Now this is not what we want to connect to. This is their connection string. We're going to use our connection string. We're going to connect to config.db.connection, or whatever um, variable you named it. I named it connection. Now this other thing, use new URL parser true, use unified topology true, that's more boilerplate stuff um, that you have to turn on. If you don't, you'll get a little warning saying, hey, it's been deprecated, um, but just go ahead and put it in there, just trust me. So if I do node cars, there we go, we don't get an error or anything, so it is working as intended. If we did something wrong, it would have thrown an error and said, hey, hey, there's a problem, here's the problem. It could be something like, you don't have um, permission to access this, it could be bad username and password, um, things like that. There's all kinds of things that could go wrong, but obviously none of it did. So we've connected to the database, but we're not actually doing anything with that connection. So in order to use Mongoose, the first thing you have to do is you have to create what's called a schema. A schema basically defines the format of your data. If you remember from our um, MongoDB Atlas, this is what ours looks like. It has an ID, make, model, year, color, mileage, needs repair, and it is a car. So we need to make a schema for this. So we're going to do const car 
schema equals new mongoose dot schema. And I'm just I'm going to go a little bit slower here because I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Mongoose refers to this variable that we are importing when we require mongoose, and it has a method called schema. Method called schema. This method takes one input, and that input is an object. Inside of this object, we need to define what our data should look like. And remember, NoSQL allows us to change this in the future. So if we make it now and we want to add things to it or take things away from it in the future, we sure can. It's not a problem. So our schema has make, and make is a string. It has model, model is a string. It has year, year is a number. I know in um, over here we had to define it as an int 32, but number is what Mongoose uses. And we had color, which was a string. We had mileage, which was a number. And we had needs repair which is a boolean. This schema basically just tells our JavaScript what the data is going to look like. So now that we've created the schema, we have to actually use the schema. Because right now that's just making a schema, but we're not actually doing anything with it. So now we're going to use it. Const car. Notice that I capitalized car. That's not required, but it is recommended for all of your schema. It just makes it easier on the back end. That's kind of the convention. Const car equals mongoose.model you pass in the name of what you what your thing that you're modeling car and then pass in the schema because basically what this does is it compiles your schema into a, a like a car object a car um, class if you will that has a lot of different methods on it that you can use for example car.find car.create car.delete things like that so it takes the schema we defined and creates a much more complex object with all these methods that we need so let's make, let's add a new car to the database. So let's make, let's go ahead and just define that. Const my truck, which is the vehicle I'm currently driving, equals a new car. And we call car as a function, passing in a single argument, which is an object. On that object, we just pass in all of these key, key value pairs. Make is a Chevrolet. Model, it is a Silverado. Year, the 2006. Color is again silver. Mileage is a crap ton. I want to say it's like 120, something like that. It's a lot. Needs repair is false. I actually just got out of the shop because the AC went out, which in South Carolina in July is not a fun time. So it no longer needs repair. Basically, what this does creates a new my truck variable and then actually builds the car out. This creates a new instance of car that is populated with this data that we passed in, as well as all the methods that we need to interact with our database. Please note that this does not do anything to the database. This is only inside of our JavaScript application. This doesn't has not yet touched the database. We are making a my truck variable, and then because we're calling it a new car, a car is a class, and my truck is an instance of that class with this information. Because we did we created car up here we're using mongoose model it has all of the different uh, methods that we need but all we're doing now is creating a single variable or constant called my truck that is an instance of car in order to actually save it to the database we have to do my truck dot save now what this will do is this will attempt to save this document to the database however as it sits right now, we have no way of knowing if it's successful in saving. So we can, we don't have to, but we can pass it a callback function. Error and car. The first thing returned will be an error, if any, and the second thing returned will be um, the object that you create. So really, all I want to do is if error, console.log, error. Else, console.log, So basically this is going to try and save it. If it works, awesome, it's just going to console log the car. If it doesn't work, it's going to tell us the error. So that's node app or not app.js cars.
there we go. It console.log that, meaning that it's in our database. So let's go back over here and refresh. So this is Josh from the future. I just sat there and had errors and problems, and I couldn't figure out what, what, what I was doing wrong. It's because I made a typo in the last video, in the previous video, in my config.js. The connection string, this part right here, let's see where, right here, I had written cars. That's the wrong database. I need to connect to the practice database, because over here, it practice with the cars document. So make so go back to your config.js and change the thing after the mongodb.net slash to practice, or whatever you named your practice database. So now that we've done that and gotten that right, let's go ahead and run this bad boy. So node cars.js. Let's see if it works. It should. There we go. So it gave us back that information. Let's refresh. And we have cars with two objects. We have a Chevy Celebrity and a Chevy Silverado. We populated our database. We added stuff to our database from our program. And let's stop our server. In the past, when we did that, our data disappeared. But our data is still here now. We now have data persistence. Boom. Still got them both. So this is one way that you can add items to your um, database. There are two other ways. The second option, we're going to delete this, the whole mytruck.save thing. We've still got the constant, we've still got the schema and all that stuff. Those are required no matter which option you're taking. But the second option that you can do is you can pass data to the model followed with a callback. So instead of doing mytruck.save, we will do car, which is the model, dot create. And this is the one that I used to use a lot. It, it works better than this one. It's a little bit clearer. It's not the best, in my opinion, for most cases. However, it still has its uses. And what you do inside of car create is you pass your data. My truck. And then you pass your callback. Error and whatever the car is. And then it's the exact same as before. If error, console.log, error, else, console.log, car. This is a little bit shorter, you can see, than the previous version. Let's run it and make sure it actually works. Node cars.js. Yep, still did there. And let's refresh. We should now have three items. Two of them are going to be the exact same, but we got them. Yep, got three items. So that's another way to do it. This used to be the best way, and still, honestly, this works in most cases. The thing to watch out for is if you are doing having to do a lot inside of here. Um, we're not going to get there for a while, but if you start to get into um, like getting all of your comics and then getting the comments on your comics and then getting the replies to your comments on your comics and getting this and that and that and, that and the other, you get into to what's known as callback hell. We haven't gotten there. Um, we're, we'll talk about it when we do. But, um, but really, this is a shorter way, but it's not the best way. So I'll go ahead and comment that out so you can see that. And now we'll get to the best way. And this way is based on promises. If you remember from last week in fetch with promises, with the, all the dot then and the dot catch and things like that, that's what, how we're going to do it here. Car dot create my truck, but instead of passing a callback function, you drop down below and do a dot then. And what's going to be passed into here is a promise. That promise is going to have two things on it that we can use. It's going to have an error and a car, just like up here. And car being whatever we're creating. So if it was comics, this would be comic. And then we can treat this just like a regular promise. If error, console.log error, else, console.log car. Note that I'm having to handle the error inside the then. Mongoose does not have dot catch functionality. Unfortunately, they have not implemented that. So all it returns is a, something that you can use with dot then, but to kind of overcome that, it does return those two things, an error if one exists, and car. If an error doesn't exist, it'll just return undefined there, so this won't run. So let's give that a go. Let's see if it works. 
There we go. Worked like a charm. Let's refresh. We should now have four items. There we go. One, two, three, four. So all three of those work. This is just the best one. The reason is that if we need to get all the cars and then get all the drivers of those cars and then get all of the friends of those drivers or whatever, we can just do dot then. So instead of constant logging car, we could return car and then dot then do something else and then dot then do something else and we're staying on the same level and we're staying so that it um, they run asynchronous they run um, they run one after the other this this then will not run until this one has completed now the same is true with these callbacks this one won't run and or the next one won't run until this one's completed but you get into callback hell And this is what your call callback hell starts to look like. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit easier. If this, else this, then you've got a callback, then you've got another callback, then you've got another callback, and you end up with all this mess at the bottom and you don't know what level you're on. It gets super difficult to work with. The more callbacks you have, the farther over you indented you go, and the more of these hanging um, brackets that you end up with, it becomes just absolutely insane to try and work with. That's what I mean when I'm talking about callback hell. That's why this is so awesome, because it stays on the same level. You know that all the stuff within this single, these single brackets right here, actually these sing, these brackets right there, are going, is what's going to happen. Okay? So we right here we can do console.log car if we wanted to. And that's it for this video. In this video, we looked at Mongoose. We learned that Mongoose is a JavaScript package that a lot, makes it a lot easier to work with MongoDB whenever we're working in Node. Um, the reason that we're using it is because MongoDB's native API is kind of clunky and frustrating to work with, so it's a lot easier to work with Mongoose than it is just to use the native um, MongoDB API. We learned how to connect to our Mongoose instance using uh, mongoose.connect. We imported it in the mongoose.connect, and we learned the boilerplate for that. We learned about schemas and how you um, const whatever you want your schema to be named equals new mongoose.schema. And all you pass into that is an object with key value pairs, the values being the data type. And that's just the schema is basically like a blueprint for what you want your data to look like. And then we are creating a class car using that schema. So this mongoose.model compiles the schema into a class. And this right here is what you is the single single name of what you want the collection to be called. So because it's car, you can look over here and my collection is called cars. Mongo, uh, Mongoose will automatically pluralize this. So car is what you want. In this case, if I was going to do it for comic books, I would do comic, not comics, comic. And then I made a my truck car. My truck is an instance of the class car, and I passed in the values for each of those keys. And then we looked at three separate ways to add that to the database. The first one is outdated and nobody really uses it anymore, so I just went ahead and deleted it. The second one still works fine. A lot of the time, however, it uses callbacks, and you can end up in callback hell if you um, have to go more than a time or two deep. So I recommend you use this last one, which is promise-based. Car, or whatever your model is, dot create your data, and then dot use the dot then syntax. And then the dot then is passed um, the error and car, or error and comic, or error and whatever your item is here. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.